Hi everyone, this is Scott McLeod with another episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. I am very fortunate today to have as my guest, Jeff Silverbrown. He's the department chair of social science at Ukiah High School in California. Um, and he's gonna share with us a little bit about his high school's response to the global pandemic. So Jeff, welcome. Why don't we just dive right in and you can let us know uh, how has your high school been responding so far? What have you been up to? Well, thanks Scott for having me. Um, uh, our high school has been through some recent, uh, over the past few years, uh, natural disasters. We've had uh, devastating wildfires. This class has gone through two significant wildfires, um, power shutdowns that have lasted a week due to other wildfires in the state. So the kids have been super resilient and our, our school and our district kind of prepared a few weeks before. We were one of the first um, regions to kind of shut down and go shelter in place. And so we, uh, around the 27th of February, our principal came in and said, you know, remote learning could be a real thing, so have the departments prepare. And then um, by March 16th, that was our last day, it was a Monday, we were with the kids, we got them all set and prepped. Uh, we are a one-to-one -one Chromebook school and a district, so uh, remote learning started on the 17th and started immediately. However, the, probably the most significant thing our district um, really started with is we, about 80% of our kids are free and reduced lunch. Okay. And uh, everybody at the school gets uh, a lunch at, at no financial fee. And we, so we're feeding a lot of families uh, in our region. We, uh, our region is basically about 20,000 people and our school is about 1,600 at the high school. And so the school became probably the number one thing the school did is set up uh, food for the students that were still that still needed it even though they weren't attending school. Sure. Um, so buses became essentially uh, mobile food wagons. They would go to the bus stops, drop off food. Yep. Um, our elementary schools and intermediate and high school all became uh, locations where kids could pick up meals. We're on spring break now this week, and they supplied six days worth of food to every family that showed up. So that probably number one was making sure the physical well-being of those families was met. Um, the second thing was to make sure that the mental health of all the students uh, was solid. And we've been communicating. I mean, the, part of the number one thing we've been establishing since the day we left was making sure that teachers communicate. Uh, elementary school teachers, uh, talk uh, daily with their kids, you know, trying to just, you just staying in touch and staying connected. Right. Um, our, some of our teachers are holding actual classes. Um, I, a lot of the high school and upper level high school teachers are doing office hours. I require my students to check in once a week. Okay. And a lot of it is, is not even a content thing. It's how are you doing? How's your family situation? Um, because right now, the, a lot of concern, because we are in a rural kind of a poor area, is that making sure the kids' condition at home is okay. Right. Um, unfortunately, one of my students is a, a worker at social service. The number of reported um, child abuse cases uh, has gone down 80%, which means that there's a lot of problems going out. It, but being able to report, which we do a lot at school, and the sheriff just reported reported that um, although overall crime has dropped about 15 percent, uh, the crimes of domestic abuse and child abuse have gone up close to 30 percent. Right. And uh, and so we're trying to check in with those kids, make, you know, still doing our jobs as mandated reporters and kind of um, school psychologists. There's all of our counselors and TOSAs have set up into teams and we're just constantly contacting kids and making sure we get them all, um, all in. So and, Jeff, if I can follow up on that. So mm -hmm. from a, so you're a teacher. So did you get any additional training or conversation before you all went remote about how to deal with those sort of um, social emotional needs of your students and those mandatory reporting issues as you went virtual? So, or was it kind of like expected that you just knew how to transition over and do that in a virtual way? You know, we've been doing a lot of um, transitioning at our school and doing more stuff in the cloud, more stuff online. So we, we kind of had the fundamentals and foundations set up. Um, there were things added on um, that we could report to the counseling and the vice principal staff whenever we thought there was a violation 
that we had to report. So there are, are essentially the forms have moved online and, um, and we're still holding virtual meetings and making sure that we talk to counselors and other members of the leadership team when we see potential problems. So um, that transition, the transition's actually been pretty smooth being able to report these issues. Okay, got it. So I'm really interested, you're actually the first teacher that I've interviewed for the Coronavirus Chronicles. I've been focusing on the, the leadership side of things. Um, and I know that you're a teacher leader within, and you're part of the leadership team at your high school. I'm interested in, um, from your perspective, how has taking care of the staff looked like at your school, right? Because you have to take care of you all too, right? Yeah, um, I thought the one of the top things that right after, you know, we started to deal with the, make sure the kids had the technology and the, make yeah. sure they had internet access available. Um, there was a, a really deliberate um, message sent out to the teachers, look, we, especially those with children, now, you know, you're homeschooling kids and, and engaging in remote learning with your students. And it was really important for teachers to check in with each other. Um, doing, we meet as departments once a week and, and half the meeting, maybe even more than half, is just checking in mentally with each other. Yep. How are we doing? Because there is a little bit, um, I think of for a lot of teachers, um, there are a little bit of questioning is what I'm doing getting to the kid? How do I know that? Am I getting that mental stimulation of the engagements I have with the kids? It doesn't exist online, um, but the district has been sending teachers messages, mm -hmm. um, staff is sending each other messages, meeting informally. So I'm, uh, yeah, I, I, there is a real, and in, in our you know leadership agenda is going forward. There's a, a lot about making sure that we. Um, you know, we, we're, we're in this together. That, that is very clear. And that when somebody is kind of, is, needs a little bit of extra help, uh, it is there for them. Got it. Cool. So uh, we got a few minutes left. So mm -hmm. what do you feel like your high school has done that's worked really well? And what might be some uh, challenges at your current stage of remote teaching and learning um, or sticking points that maybe others should think about? Um, I think uh, the one thing we've done really well is that we've pushed the idea of um, just communicating with students as much as possible. Um, I hold office hours. It's spring break, but I just open it up and if they want to contact me while I'm online just to talk and they do it. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that if, if, you know, now that a lot of people aren't dealing with discipline because we aren't on campus anymore, that whole shift has been over to where are the students are they in a safe place and i i think our district you know we moved so fast so quickly here in northern california um they set up that line of communica communication and making sure that it's a the most important thing is getting a hold of every student we can and then making sure that we're regularly staying in contact that's the number one priority going forward to the end of the school year um, I would probably say a significant challenge in being in rural Northern California is still um, the internet. And we still have a, a close to 10% of the population that doesn't have access to the internet. Right. So we're getting really creative about um, how students deliver paperwork to the school, where it's placed, mm -hmm. um, allowing teachers to come days later to pick it up because of the contamination issues. Right. Um, my students text, me there that don't have internet they just take a picture of their computer screen and text me their cool. work and that's how we stay in touch Got it. but that's probably you know the technology piece and then you know again our learning how to develop instruction as value of the students and then also that the teachers feel like they're giving something of value to the students right it sounds like you've been very creative so um which is great i mean we have to try anything we can right to sort of re-engage students and um, take care of them and each other so it sounds like we all did some good stuff what else do you want to share so anything else come to mind um just you know um if there was a, that one thing that i would i would uh the, the blogging community the twitter Mm -hmm. um, Facebook groups, I think what teachers need to realize um, in any level, and it doesn't have to be just your, you know, AAP, there are groups out there for every subject matter, right. um, every, 
every problem, every issue you might have, the, the online community has been fantastic. Go out there. Um, now we don't have a lot of state testing to, to deal with. Take some risks. Mm -hmm. Get out there and, and uh, you know, there, be there for your kids. But um, th that thing you ever always wanted to think they needed to know, go out there and uh, have fun with it. Absolutely. Jeff, that was a fantastic way to end this conversation. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you, Scott. Appreciate your time and good luck to you and your wife, you know, who you said is also a teacher um, during these challenging times and we'll make it through the end of the year, right? That's right. We're going to do it. We're moving right. forward. <laughs> Thanks.